abstract reasoning AR the weirdest section in the UCAT test how did you get 890 you ask I don't know either but continue to find out how <music> everyone and welcome back to Jones Med. If you are new here, my name is Hazal and I'm a first year medic studying at Barts in London and if you are not new here, thank you so much for tuning into another video. You've probably clicked on this video because you're meant to be doing abstract reasoning prep but you're finding it really hard and I don't blame you. However, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully this video is going to make life a lot easier for you. In this video, I'll be telling you guys the tips and tricks I use to get 890 out of 900 in abstract reasoning. This is so important. Make sure you guys understand the different types of questions that can come up in abstract reasoning. There will be four different types you'll come across and these are type one questions, which is when you'll be presented with two sets of shapes labeled sets A and sets B and you'll be given a test shape and asked to decide whether the test shape belongs to set A, set B or neither. Type two questions are when you'll be presented with a series of shapes you'll then be asked to select the next shape in the series. For type 3 questions, you'll be presented with a statement involving a group of shapes. You'll be asked to determine which shape completes the statement. And finally, for type 4 questions, you'll be presented with two sets of shapes labelled set A and set B. You'll then be asked to select which of the four response options belong to set A or set B. For type 1 questions, don't be afraid to pick neither i know it's quite unsettling where you don't press set a or set b especially for me but if this is what your instinct is telling you go with it for type 2 questions you are given a whiteboard to take use of it you can use this whiteboard to note down any similarities you see in the series of shapes to help you pick the next one and for type 4 questions the ucat app was very useful so i definitely recommend you go check it out it is so important that you know what you are looking for. This comes with practice, but you need to get used to and understand the different types of patterns that can come up in different abstract reasoning questions. An acronym I like to use was SCANS, so S-C-A-N-S, SS. So firstly, check if there's a similarity in the shapes that are present in the different boxes. Also look at angles. There may be a specific number of angles in each of the different boxes. Look out for the number of shapes present in each of the boxes. Also look for symmetry. For example, set A may have all symmetrical shapes and set B may have all asymmetric shapes. Also check the number of sides. For example, in set A, all the shapes might have a total of nine sides, but in set B, all the shapes might have a total of seven sides. And also look look out for the size of the shapes. Other things that are important to look out for include orientation. So in set A, all the arrows might point to the left and in set B, all the arrows might point to the right. Also look out for position. For example, in a specific set, all the circles might be positioned on top of the squares and in the other set, all the squares are positioned on top of the circles. As you can see, there are lots of different patterns that you could pick up in an abstract reasoning question and this simply comes with practice. As soon as I started the abstract reasoning section of my exam, I remember getting the whiteboard and writing down all the different patterns that can come up. This meant that if I ever got stuck on a question, I could quickly glance down at the whiteboard to see if there was a specific pattern that I hadn't looked out for yet, then look back at the question and hopefully this can help me figure it out quickly. When practicing, it might be a good idea to grab some paper and also write it down so you can replicate what you will be doing in the exam. I can't stress this enough. Distractors can be so dangerous. Again, this will come with practice, but there'll be some questions where you feel like you found a pattern and it fits all the boxes but one box because one of the boxes just has such a random shape in it and this can be a distractor, so don't get caught in the trap. Distractors are added into questions to literally distract you, as it says in the name, and waste your time. So please, please, please don't fall for the trap. And the only way you can work on this is by doing as many practice questions as you can. What I like to do was take note of all the different distractors that I discovered in all of the questions. And this meant that I was able to see trends in the different types of distractors using the questions. This is one of the most important things you can take from this video. 
make sure you start with the simpler boxes in the set questions whether the box looks really complicated or really simple every single box has to follow the same pattern so the easiest way to find the pattern is find the two simplest boxes within the set and compare those to find a pattern and then see if this pattern also works with the more complicated boxes it's going to waste your time if you try to find the pattern in the boxes that look more complicated first because some of those shapes in those boxes are probably there as distractors so start with the simple boxes to find the patterns and then see if those patterns match the other boxes within that set you're going to hear me say this so many times in the upcoming videos but guess flag and skip i know a lot of us feel like guessing and skipping questions is such a waste of time because you're probably going to get it wrong but honestly on my exam day i guessed and skipped around three or four questions and it worked out the questions were really hard and i was panicking and i was struggling to find the pattern within the question so i just guessed flagged and skipped you literally have 55 questions to answer in 13 minutes so you don't have time to dwell on a specific question and spend five minutes trying to find a pattern you simply haven't got the luxury to do that i'm saying you should flag it and you should skip it because there might be a miracle and you might have some time left at the end so you can then come back to this question and make sure your answer was correct literally think about it all the questions are worth one mark so why dwell on that one question where you can't find a pattern rather than go to a next question that might be a bit easier so you can find a pattern quicker and get that one mark that you need it makes sense on screen i'm going to put some of the keyboard shortcuts that i really recommend you guys use because it helps you navigate yourself around the exam in a more efficient way and helps you save time and finally practice makes perfect especially with abstract reasoning when it's genuinely nothing you've ever come across before you can't expect to get better unless you practice 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 the more questions you do the more patterns you come across and the more they stick in your head helping you on the exam day it's really important that you guys understand where you went wrong in each question and apply it to the next question you come across this is how you will learn i recommend you guys practice on a computer because that represents the exam day but if you can't it's also okay to practice with a book a laptop or even on your phone because the more questions you do the more patterns you'll come across so it's okay but that is it guys those are all the tips and tricks i have to help you guys absolutely smash abstract reasoning i know it's hard don't get me wrong but it's definitely not impossible with practice and dedication you guys can do very well in abstract reasoning and in the rest of your UCAT exam I feel like everyone is almost on the same page when it comes to abstract reasoning because you might be good at maths you might be bad at English but no one's really done abstract reasoning before which means if you work hard on it you can actually get a really good score in it whereas someone who hasn't worked on it and hasn't come across it before might not get that same good score like I said in the last video I'll be releasing five videos this week this is the first one so make sure you check out the rest of the four videos for the other four sections of the UCAT exam as always make sure you guys like comment subscribe turn on your post notifications so you don't miss any of the videos and also follow us on Instagram and Twitter I'll see you guys in a new video tomorrow bye